Just before World War II, archaeologists in Suffolk uncovered one of the greatest discoveries of our time, the Anglo-Saxon burial mounds at Sutton Hoo. Helen Geek explains. Mrs Pretty decided to investigate the burial mounds that were on her property. She rang up Ipswich Museum and asked for advice on a freelance archaeologist. It seems like another world where a landowner can simply employ an archaeologist to open their burial mounds. But that's what happened. In Mound 1 over there, he discovered an intact ship and a burial chamber. When news of this got out, archaeologists from Cambridge University and the British Museum came in to help, and the most fabulous, extraordinary archaeological treasure was discovered there. Excavations revealed the burial chamber of a person in a wooden ship. He was accompanied by a wealth of fabulous objects. This was the grave of a very rich man. Helmets are incredibly rare. Special headgear seems to be appropriate for a king, as it still is today. He's got um, other things like the strange whetstone that's made into a scepter. It's got polish in the middle where your hand could have held it and a little cup which could sit on your knee so you can hold your scepter like a modern king. Some people see a very strong Swedish influence. Some people see a very strong classical Byzantine um, influence. Uh, other people say that it, he's got a bit of everything. He's trying out a lot of different, different methods of making us see that he's a, an important ruler of the East Angles. By the seventh century, parts of Britain have become a series of politically powerful kingdoms, later to be known as England. Do you suppose a boatload of Anglo-Saxon royal family came sailing up the Deben and thought, whoopee, this is the place for me, got off the boat and set up their kingdom here. The origin myths that we have recorded by people like Bede do seem to indicate that in the 5th century boatloads of royalty did row up and think, well, I will create my kingdom here. Um, but, uh, but we just don't, don't have any archaeological evidence to back that up at all. What seems much more likely is that um, that by some process of, of internal social development, kings arose at some point in the late 6th century and then decided to kind of create this, this origin myth to explain where they'd come from. Probably they'd just murdered and fought their way to the top, but they wanted to say that they'd always been royal. In fact, they're descended from the gods, you know. Sutton Hoo is the most elaborate of a number of rich Anglo-Saxon burials over the south and east of Britain. Archaeologists are divided about where these powerful new leaders came from. Heinrich Harker favours the idea they were invaders. Until Sutton Hoo was found, Tablow was the richest Anglo-Saxon grave in England. These big Anglo-Saxon burials of the 7th century were very often located on the tops of ridges. Taking up a dominant position in the landscape demonstrates who you are, who your family was. Heinrich Harker believes an invasion is the best way of explaining the changes in culture that took place after the Romans left. Why do we have to have migrations? It's very difficult to prove that people came here in large numbers from abroad. Francis, I believe you can demonstrate that this is still, given the evidence, mm. the best possible explanation. Your argument is we do not need um, migrations to explain culture change. This yeah. is essentially the underlying argument. Yes. I agree with that. And actually, if at the moment you look to Russia, post-Soviet Russia, you see a huge culture change but it is not brought in by immigrant Westerners. Exactly. It is marketed there. Of course, you can say there is no proof that they came here, and I accept that. We cannot trace them across the North Sea, but it is still the best explanation. I mean, I'd love to agree with you, only I can't see any outsiders would have come here without there being one hell of a fight, and there is no evidence for a struggle. If people move on to my land, I'm not happy about that. If you're there, you are not. Right, so you think, people, you think that people would actually have moved out? Because there's not I, much I evidence have, for that. 
after the collapse of a civilization, you do have population decline. If there is population decline, there was also space, more space in the landscape than there was in the Roman system. I don't believe that there was a hole in British society. If anything, you know, the taxes were removed, I would have thought people said, whoopee, it's Christmas, I don't have to pay taxes, I'm much better off. And so when the Romans left, people actually probably got more prosperous. Um, very much a farmer's view, <laughs> I, I would have thought. I like that. Farmer's view or not, the invasion explanation just isn't enough. 